No peace, just war. Hello there everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire, diving back into the Warhammer world with Total War Warhammer 3, and per the votes that we had on who I was going with, we are going with the Empire of Sigmar under Emperor Karl Franz. We are going to take the fight to the forces of chaos, the beastmen, the chaos warriors, all their champions. We will take our fight to the Greenskins, to the Chaos Dwarves, to the Dark Elves, and we will reign supreme. Or at least that's the hope anyways. <laughs> but yes, you can see here we've got everything set. We're selected with Franz. Franz gets all kinds of incredible bonuses, plus 10 diplomatic relations with the Empire, Lord Recruit rank, campaign movement range for all armies, and the Lord effects just absolutely great. Now. For the uh, settings, we're of course playing on hard and hard for the campaign difficulty. And I do have the uh, oh the uh, end game scenario uh, set for the timer range around 160 to 220, just to have that put out a little bit further. And we will have a number of different potential crises arising for us: either the Black Pyramid, the biggest wall. Vampiric Ascension, Vermintide, or the Will of Hushut to come down upon us at the end. Not going to do Ultimate Crisis Mode. Uh, just want to have a relatively relaxing time with this overall. And as we get this campaign going here... Oh, hold on. From the icy sea of claws in the north to the soaring black mountains in the south... The individuality of the Empire's provinces is much defined by its landscape. Its vast forests provide food and the materials of production, while wide rivers and traversable valleys facilitate trade and transport. Yet at times, the land itself seems to strive against progress, concealing monsters and enemies of all sorts amongst its craggy passes and dark groves. Peril awaits within and without, but the nations of men have thus far proved equal to the challenge. Now, just remember, if you're new here to the channel, go on down there, hit the subscribe button, and become a regular member here at the Gamers. Now is the time, men of the Empire, to unite! Yes, my Emperor. And uh, if you've already gone on ahead and done that and listed yourself on such an incredible roster of legendary heroes, then go on down and hit the like button and share the video far and wide. Now, playing with the Empire of Man, let's see here. We have the ignore that. Empire Secessions. Odd that the White Thunder would go ahead and rebel against the Empire of Sigmar like that, but that's okay. Gotta have that initial challenge. We've got to reclaim all of our territory here. So, let's go ahead and do I that. command here. Hell of a good starting army compared to where we started off at with Warhammer 1 and Warhammer 2. And we also have the Dragon Tooth. One of 12 magical swords belonging to the Empire's Elector Counts, Dragon Tooth has long defended the Imperial Heartlands and capital Altdorf from all manner of ill intentioned foes. And it's great for that big boost down here the Reichland Runefang effect, plus 24 melee attack, and plus 8 leadership to all allies in range, a 35 meter effect range absolutely incredible boost to have. I mean, that puts these guys up to 56 with the Empire Greatswords, 50 for the Halberdiers, and uh, 56 again for the Swordsmen. I mean, that's just awesome. And, and 58 for the Reichsguard. Ah, well. Let's go ahead and go find Helmut Lundhoff. Attack! Close victory. Somehow, I doubt that. We're gonna fight this to minimize our casualties. Uh, got some decent forests there. We'll see how long this campaign goes for, and 
We'll see how everything else is going with life. I don't know if I'm going to have this up by the time I make the announcement or not. Hopefully I do, but it's just been maintaining the energy to we keep up with everything is tricky. So not that I'm trying to complain or make excuses, but it is what it is, unfortunately. We are Sigmar's ass! their numbers low enough shouldn't have them remain on the battle or on the map Escape that might accidentally harden their resolve to the point where, like, oh, well, if we're gonna die, we might as well go out swinging. And people tend to fight harder in that situation when they know they're gonna die. I mean, even Sun Tzu, you know, ancient Bronze Age China, understood this aspect of 
human nature. It's like it's specifically cited if you're if you have your forces uh, on death ground, you know, ground where you and all your troops are going to die, you're gonna fight harder. But man, what a horrifying thing. So, anyways, idea being, you leave them that escape route just so they keep that sense of hope, like they've got a chance at survival. And sure, you send your cavalry after them to kind of ride them down and keep them from reforming, potentially capturing any high-value people uh, in all the chaos of the retreat. But, uh, yeah, you wanted to leave them an escape route. Plus, you know, if you're fighting in uh, terms of conquest, taking over other territory, as would usually be the case, you don't want to wipe everybody out. Because all those levies, all, the, all those people, those are people who are going to work the lands. They're going to build things. They're going to grow food and generate income and pay taxes and facilitate all the trade and transfer of goods and it's also going to draw your own future additional levies from. So, we want to let them at least have a shot at running. In this case, even with the uh, potential survivors, you know, ideally they're just going to break and disperse and either integrate into my own troops or go back home. Hopefully they go back home. By the way, hope you don't mind me rambling about whatever subjects seem to just strike my mind. I, it's a little bit late this night, and... It's been an exhausting day, a lot of work at work, a lot of work at home. 10% replenishment, ooh, excellent. This makes Grunberg vulnerable. I command here. Talk about archer. So yeah, I may just let my brain on that, I took a... Uh, Summon the Elector Counts! So, that whole aspect of consciousness is going to be interesting. Let's see here. Into battle! March on Grunberg. Again, could probably auto resolve, but medium casualties, I don't like the sound of that. So, we are going to fight this battle, especially since it's not going to be a settlement battle. And we get the hilltop. Holy crap. So we'll get a nice downward charge bonus. We just don't want to do that into the spears, at least not without them being broken up a little bit. Eh, not much of a hill, but you know what? They can still work with us, so we are ready. Front. Hand gunners! Swordsmen! Help with ears! Hand gunners! The empire endures! Mortar! Great swords! Calls. Go! 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 Go!
Six losses, 411 losses. I'd say that's pretty decisive. Ah, and some veteran C marks. Nice. I really am enjoying this new computer. I mean, it's still taking a little bit of time to load here, but everything, all of this, is just better quality all the way around and I haven't gotten to have something like that in a long time feels nice mm, plunder, you know what it's that 8% unit replenishment that's got my eye the money's not worth it but that replenishment you know what we'll still get a good amount of replenishment I command here. Yeah, that works. I am France. They will obey. Now, reducing the recruit cost. That's I need to get rid of this soon. But I think I'm just gonna the Empire. with it for now. What do I These guys aren't bad. Free company militia, that hybrid unit aspect is really useful, but Lurchers are nice too. It's mostly that better range and just a little bit more ammo. They're not great against armor as it says just right up there in the corner of the unit stat card. But Early Empire units, you know, 20 armor, 30 armor with a chance of range blocking, uh, 30 armor, 95. It's not until you get to great swords and different kinds of knights that you see really heavy armor start to come into play. So, and given that our first round of enemies are Empire Secessionists and potentially other Elector Counts, we can get away with having more archers but let's do one of each so that way we're not entirely losing out on our uh, melee capacity but we're not entirely losing out on our ranged options either and adding more troops is going to be really handy because we have to take Uber's Reich, Eilhart and also Helmgard and Helmgard has 14 units and it's a world section there the fact that we start off with artillery is a cool. lot easier, but we are going to need more. Now, for our research. Ooh, tie three baits. 
or better speed for my infantry and opening up a whole host of other options here that'll really serve us well then we have these You know, we're going to go with this, because that increase in veterancy and reduced recruitment cost will go a long way for us. Okay. First turn done. Just a note here, I'll probably leave in this first turn, but look at how much faster the turn selection's going overall. Like, it's just hop, skip, and jumping right on along there, especially in comparison to what my laptop can do. And this is only going to get faster. A prestigious act indeed. Just keep All on. those who lead within the Empire. Your empire is a beacon of civility in a savage world, sire. It is your task, nay, your privilege. You know what? Gray That's not wizard. bad. Shadow magic is not bad. The lore of shadows is pretty good, honestly. But. For a general like friends, where we are going to get uh, his Griffin Deathclaw at level 16, it's really going to jump friends' hit, hit points up, and a Jade Wizard is going to be more, much more useful. But yes, in the meantime, my orders are to move. Well. And you know what? This much magic earlier on Summon is going to be artifacts. handy. And also the scouting effect is also going to be handy so early on, especially as we advance Summon that, the Elector Count. Because that'll give us more magic items, even if it's just a bunch of grays and green quality. You know, common and uncommon. We can still fuse those together to make better magic items as things go on, which will be great. And we should also recruit more. Another swords and another archer. Now we're at 14. Ooh. I'll ignore that. Hans Frankenworter. I will not Boris obey. Valgier. See, some of these names are interesting. Bring I'm me to my men. Not super familiar with Germanic naming conventions and the like, but Frankenverter, that just seems somehow a little bit much. Um, I refuse. Hard, so that means there's 20 units down there now. Damn. So. Sigma's will, yes. Okay, so we'll greetings, my countrymen. You know, come in peace on this fine mark tag. Because I did have an Empire playthrough when my laptop was still working, but oh gosh, that's so expensive. You, that won't pay for itself for a while, and Hawkland stands a decent chance of being wiped out thing was with that playthrough same settings except for the uh, end game crisis mode um, the the fecundites under uh, what's his nuts the corrupted chaos All right. doctor champion oh well I'll remember I'll remember his name later but he Sigma's will Welcome, my countrymen! Uh, he usually ends up coming down and really stomping the crap out of these immediate Elector Counts. Sometimes even getting up to up to here in Nordland if uh, Norska hasn't beaten them to it. But beat the daylights out of them here. I managed to keep Middenland alive, and actually the Fecundites were great for 
making friends because I keep coming up here and beating the snot out of these guys. And I restored Hawkland a couple of times as well. So lots of Imperial authority off of that and made friends with Middenland and Nordland and managed to keep them alive even when I couldn't quite fully wipe them out. Which was very nice. Good, you're not at war with any other elector counts. So it happens a lot. Have them balance the offer. Make this all the one worthwhile. Born to rule. And making what friends news with the ice do you court. bring to the ice strong, Definitely friend? handy. A pleasure and an honor. What? start let's see ah. no okay. the internal politics I of the empire are never easy this but rough. this is an opportunity to show other electors your might Rossland would be close with confederating with us, but they're further north and more at risk from Norska, the Fecundites, uh, potentially Chaos Dwarves, Chaos Warriors. So making friends with Sterling seems like the best option right now. Okay. I command here. So I refuse. Three, I will eight, not so obey. 11. Sigma forbids this. This Reich has another seven, so eighteen. Is it time? Oh. Fourteen against their eighteen. I think I can pull that off, especially since I'm really only fighting three men first. War cook. And even then, it'd just be a pyrrhic victory. That'll slow me down too much. And I think I can do much better than up here. I, I might have the garrison in there with him other than just those three. We'll have to see here. Ooh, but we got a great spot. Great couple of spots to work with. The only thing is I have to advance on them. Hmm. This will be interesting. Two minutes. So I've actually got ready for war. Ah. Go. For the twin tail comet. Ah. Yep, we're going. Ready! Go! 
Jack's call! My rule is absolute! Prepare for combat! Send us out! Taking position! Take the ground! For Heldenhammer! Reichsguard Knights! I call Yes, sir! Sir! Blue to cannons! Take aim! Go! Mike Scott Knights! Of course. Formation, march! Ulrich's wrath on them! We obey! The Grey Order! So 597, 597, that's 610, so 1,010, ouch.
lost just a little bit over one fifth of what they did. Oh, and those Reichsguard Knights, 287, Mortars 172. Not likely. And he's on a bartered war horse now. I see no other option. As nice as it would be to keep advancing this. This will actually be handy because we'll need a bit of that. Mm. Okay. Making frowns more terrifying. Now, right. into back decisive victory, low casualties. I will take it. Okay. That unit health restoration is going to be worth it. As much as I hate to do that. Prince and Emperor. Build the smithy here. Don't need a barracks here. These buildings will be nice. So then, Just hold off on building anything for the moment. Yeah. 
Men, war calls! The nation calls. Is now secured. Now that boost to growth will be great. Let's see. Now that boost to growth. Summon the elect accounts. The Empire! Ooh. Festus the Leech Lord, that's his name. No wonder why you guys are desperate for... Greetings, my countrymen. Friendship. You come in peace on this fine Mark Tug? We'll make money out of this, I suppose. Uh, losing Elector Count territory costs you Imperial authority. On it! But there's not a whole lot you can always do what? about that to start with. So? Miss... Yes? Who calls? Greetings, my countrymen. You things. come in peace on this fine mark tag? You of course. Valiant Lord. Oh, it's just getting worse. I command here. I refuse. I'll ignore that. The Empire does not have my consent. So, like I said, it's late, so we are gonna wrap things up here. I will siege this place next. Well, not siege all the soldier walls, but. Remember, if you're new here to the channel, go on down there, hit the subscribe button, and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. Or if you've already gone on ahead and listed yourself on such an incredible roster of legendary heroes, then go on down to hit the like button and share the video far and wide. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.